All right, well, we didn't get to every single little project in the boatyard, and one of the big ones is to put our forestay back up, which I replaced the wire in the forestay, and use the uh, stay lock fittings. And now, my dad's here visiting, so he's gonna help us put the forestay back up. Doing some little finishing touches, boat work. Well, not finishing touches because we're not even close to being done. But just little projects here and there while we wait for some more parts. I'm just bolting in this little block thing, sheave, that raises and lowers the dagger board. Got some tape around it for a nice neat job. Got some bolts that work pretty good. So, take this oh. out. What's the bedding stuff? Sycoflex. Above or below the water line, resist salt water, fast, tack free time. It does cure pretty quick. That's one thing we were having to be careful about. That's gonna help hold it. <laughs> He's camera shy. Ratchet it in from the bottom. All right, you ready? Yep. It's not gonna be super tight, just snug. Is it oozing a little? All right, we got it all on. We're good. We might have to clean it up and get some varnish or uh, oil on it or something. But another project, checked off the list. So I wanna show you guys something. I didn't get to film while we were doing it, but we wanted to replace this, you, I think you call the cable the Martingale. This is the Seagull Striker. Seagull Striker. And I think the cable's called the Martingale, something like that. But it pretty much just counters the load of the forestay on that front beam. And we wanted to replace that, and we did. Our friend actually had one that was never used, but it got a little dirty and everything, so he just gave it to us. It's never been a saltwater environment. We'll just clean it up a little bit. And instead of replacing the system, like originally it had a tang here to the cable, and then a turnbuckle down there to another little tang. Same thing on this side. It was a separate tang with a separate cable down with another turnbuckle. I didn't like that because you could tension the turnbuckle separately on each side and possibly have more tension on the single rod on one side than the other. It might be easy to see, but I just didn't like the idea of that. I wanted something that would go across and be one cable all tensioned together at the same time, putting pressure straight down on the seagull striker. So our friend recommended this system to tension. That way we don't need expensive brand new turnbuckles. So that way it's just one simple wire with just a swage den on both ends, no turnbuckles, because those turnbuckles probably would have been like over 100 bucks each for new ones. And then, uh, and then just this sucker. And I don't want to tension it yet because we don't have our force day loaded up yet. We're waiting for a toggle to be made here. Um, so it's just kind of on, it's got a little bit of tension on it already, but if I tensioned that up too much, I could bend the crossbeam down too, you know, too much. It's a one and a half inch bolt that's like, I don't know, 10 inches long, eight inches long, goes down to like there. And then this nut is secured onto that. And the groove won't allow that bolt or nut to spin. So once we tension this nut, it's just gonna push the bolt up, and then that'll put a lot of tension on the on the wire. Just thought that was pretty cool. I wanted to show you guys. Getting there, getting there. Hey, you guys! I just want to give you a little update. Say hi, Sierra. Hi. We've been attacking. We're kind of waiting for like a lot of our rigging stuff to come in from Caligo, and we got some stuff from Kraken Structures as well. So we've been trying to just knock out a ton of little projects that have been floating around for a while just to get them out of the way, get the stuff out of the way. I'll show you some of the things we've been doing. Look, I attached this light and this light. They each have their own outdoor switch back here. So I can just turn one on, turn it off, but the panel's gotta be on. 
It's all right here, lights. So that's pretty cool. And I organized a little bit in here. I know it's still a disaster, but at least we don't have a ton of junk floating around. I cleaned and polished the day and organized all of our expenses. Oh yeah, look how taxes. look how clean CR got our dinghy. Jenny helped. Can you show us the products you use for that? Because it worked really well and we didn't really know what to use. So our dinghy hadn't been cleaned in a while, so we used this and then I polished it with this. And it worked really well. So now I just have to remember to keep polishing it. Probably like once a month. I have no idea where you can get this stuff. I'll look for it on Amazon. If you get it on Amazon, I'll put the link in the description. But if not, just Google it. I'm sure you'll find where. We added a cleat here. It was on originally. We just hadn't put it back on. But this cleat will also double as kind of a pad eye. We can wrap a little Dyneema loop around here and have a uh, or like a barber hauler or something to be able to tweak our Genoa sheet. And I put our spinnaker blocks back on the front here, one on this side, one on the other side. I put our lifeline eyes back in. Still gotta paint that area up a little bit. And now what are we gonna do? We're gonna put on our new sail cover. But first, I have a question for you. For you watchers out there, Billy and I are at a bit of a discrepancy. discrepancy. <laughs> We have our wonderful little Honda generator that we haven't been traveling with, but now we're going to the Caribbean and we don't have an AC, so we don't really have anything to run it with, but what if we get down there and it's like a trillion degrees and we need to buy like a little indoor AC? What if we need it? We're not luxury cruising here. We're I know we're not. Minimal cruising. There's plenty of ways to stay cool, shade, but wind for you scoops, guys fans. Who have been down there? And we've been, and we're not going to be at a marina. We're going to be on the hook, as far from land as practical. In a very protected anchorage, which is also protected from the wind. And we've been working super hard on getting rid of all this weight on the boat, and that thing's like 80 pounds. No, it's not. It's 40. No at way. Most. 60. Yes, 40, I bet you it's 60. 40 pounds. Still unnecessary. Totally unnecessary. But we have it already, and it's just gonna sit in a storage unit. No. Nope. And we could get something rid of something else that weighs 40 pounds. And like what? That. I don't know. We'll find something. We should get rid of that anyway if it's unnecessary. We purchased it. No way. I'll hook up more fans for you. We are not bringing that sucker. Do you think we should bring it? Yeah, I know the majority is going to say yes, but the majority is not minimal cruising, trying to go fast and be simple. I'm simple. I'm very low maintenance, but I think we should have it. I'll get you more fans. Because we're not going to be able what to buy it do? down I'll there. Buy an AC unit? Just like a little bit. I'm not saying we need to, I'm just saying we might want to. Oh, one more thing I want to show you guys. Sierra's hole down here is all nice and clean. Well, it was clean, but then I loaded it with all our tool stuff. There were just like two cutouts here to access underneath our fridge and the other compartment. So we, or Sierra varnished this nice panel. We just put there just to block those ugly, uneven holes. This is what I want to show you. Oh, we got some safety stuff from Weems and Plath. I think they liked our uh, crew watcher review video. Um, so we will be mounting some safety stuff. But this is what I'm most excited about. We got our chain plates in from Caligo Marine and they're titanium chain plates. So we did them the same dimensions as our old chain plates, stainless steel, but they're gonna be much much stronger and never corrode. Um, yep, that's them. But the first thing I noticed when I was like looking at them, they are, they're so much lighter than stainless steel would be. Not that like this stuff all together, it's only a few, you know, maybe 10 pounds, 20 pounds difference or something, but still it adds up. I'm just glad they're stronger and that they'll never corrode. What are we doing right now? I'm eating a rice cake and you're videoing me. But we're going to put on our new stack pack. Mac pack. Mac pack. We got a Mac pack from Mac Sales here in Stewart. And we're just gonna replace this old sail cover 
that doesn't really quite fit our sail. See how it's popping out from underneath? And this is the type of sail cover that like stays on the boom and it just has a zipper on top so that when we drop the sail, it just drops right down into the sail cover. We just pull a line and zips it up. So there's no excuse to never not cover your sail. So, pretty excited about that one. The reason we got it is because we just spent a lot of money on that sail, and right now a lot of it is like still getting hit by the sun. So. Yeah, and I've also read that just normal canvas material, or I guess probably umbrella, just after a few years, it kind of loses its UV resistance. Maybe two, three years, three, four years, I don't know. After a certain amount of time, and UV can get through it, which we'll get to our sale. Um, but anyway, ours is super old anyway. You can tell the straps are just so faded and the buckles are falling off and stuff, so. There's no holes in it or anything, but yeah, let's see our sale. We're just trying to protect our investment. Ooh. Fancy. No, that line is so that we can zipper it from up here. You, you just pull the line and it pulls the zipper all the way up. Cool, right? All right, we got the cover on. They slide on, we have this, I think it's called a bolt rope track. So just these round slides that go through the track. There's a couple, maybe four or five along the whole sail cover. Then we're gonna drill some fittings into the mast, three or four, and we tied the back of the sail cover on high up onto the topping lift. We also have to tie the bottom. Tie the bottom tie where? The back end of the pack off to the topping lift, one foot above the top of the boom, which we already did. Now tie off the bottom aft end to the end of the boom, so the back edge of the cover is about vertical. The water taxi is packed! Don't bark at them now, okay? You can't feel them because you're blocking the whole thing. Got some tough gel. What does that do? Isolates the stainless from the aluminum. So we'll put it on there, we'll also put it on the screws. So, my first ever splicing project is complete. We now have a brand new set of Lazy Jacks made out of Dyneema. And our fancy new stack pack. Mac pack. Our fancy new Mac pack. <laughs> so, uh, most of the times, uh, Mac pack does come with its own set of Lazy Jacks. Um, we decided that we wanted to get it without it so we could just make our own Lazy Jacks. We wanted to do it out of thin Dyneema and some low friction rings, kind of like how Uma did it. And Sierra did pretty much the whole thing. Oh my own. So we have some slack here, we can uncleat it, and then we can pull them forward if we want it to get it to the mast out of the way of the sail. We just have this one line that we can use to pull open the Mac pack. Go ahead. All the way, we can do it from here. Ooh. We can do it from up here. And I gotta tighten it on the back side a little bit more to get the top a little straighter, but it's pretty much it for now. Okay, so comment below if you're Team Sierra, Generator, or Team Billy, no generator. <laughs> and why? And why? I know it's not necessary, but I know we bought it, so we might as well use it. Or at least have it. Or just comment and say hi, whatever you want to do. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. <laughs>
Right. You smell. I know. What have you been working on, Miss Sierra? What? I'm putting this in. No, you're not.